Hey everybody, welcome back to Living with Multiple Myeloma. It is July of 2025, and I just wanted to make a little update video on CAR-T, basically in the vein of should you CAR-T or should you not? There's been some research that's come out recently, or a new study, the Cartitude study, I think it was extended into the Cartitude 4 study, where they've had a really long look back now at patients and also have tried CAR-T on patients um, as an, as an earlier treatment, an earlier intervention in their myeloma. And those results have come out. Now, I am a patient. I, I go to New York Cancer and Blood Specialists where I live, but the program that controls my myeloma treatment is the program at Mount Sinai. They have the multiple myeloma program there. And they are the architects of all my medical stuff. <laughs> so recently, Dr. Yagernath, Sundar Yagernath, who runs the program there, gave a report about what the latest CARTITUDE studies show. Now, what the latest CARTITUDE studies show is that people, you know, the majority of patients getting CAR-T are in very deep remissions to the extent that they can be thought of as a cure. But the newer piece of information is that the earlier that people get CAR-T in their treatment, the better off they are. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is because this actually affects me personally and might affect many of you personally, no matter where you are in your treatment journey. Now, in my journey with myeloma, I became sick in 2020, became bedridden, didn't start treatment until uh, spring of 2021. And at the time, my treatment was Cytoxan, I was very sick, Velcade, Dara, and Dexamethasone. So I had my stem cells harvested to do a stem cell harvest. Um, and I wound up having a complication, osteonecrosis of the jaw. So by the time that resolved, I had been on DARA maintenance and Revlon maintenance for a while and was doing very well on it. So I've just had my stem cells sit and haven't had a transplant. More recently, I would say um, about six months ago, we actually had to stop the Revlimid because I had to get injections for age-related macular degeneration, and I didn't want two agents in there um, that could increase my blood clot risk. So um, my Revlimid's been on hold, and I've just been on Dara, and I'm doing just fine. So I had an appointment with my specialist at Mount Sinai to talk about the study and also for my, um, you know, I see him every quarter, so for the quarterly visit. And I asked specifically about CAR-T. The thing I was curious about was, if the treatment I'm on fails, would CAR-T be the next thing? Now, the answer in my case was he said, yes, most likely CAR-T would be the next treatment. But I also said to him, since the studies have shown that the earlier you get it, the more durable the, the um, remission, um, should we just stop what we're doing now and head for CAR-T? Now, CAR-T is still hard to get in the sense of supply, um, that you have to have your cells collected, they have to be sent away to a lab, and it takes more than a month, if not a couple of months, to have, I think it's around six weeks, but somebody else can check me on that, to have those engineered cells come back to you. So that's still an issue. But if that were not an issue, should I do it now? And this is where I think the answer was interesting and why I wanted to share it with you. So my oncologist, my myeloma specialist said, no, he would not do it now. He would wait to see what happens. And the reason is, is because I'm doing fine. That's the main reason. Um, but also because there's still issues with CRS, which is a cytokine release syndrome and other neuro neurological toxici toxicities that can happen. And, you know, they're starting to see some other little complications there. Now, these are not things that would necessarily or should necessarily stop you from pursuing CAR-T if it is something you need. But since I don't need it, it's not something we're pursuing now. And this also goes hand in hand, believe it or not, with some of the new stuff that came out. There's a conference that just happened in Milan, Italy, that is sort of the European equivalent of the American Society for Hematology conference that they have every fall, or December, I think it is, where we hear, we hear about all the stuff in the U.S. And that's the new tri-specific treatments. Now, we've had plenty of bi-specific treatments, and the way those were explained to me were explained to me by my first myeloma specialist, Dr. Chari, who was at Mount Sinai and is now in San Francisco, that, you know, bi-specifics, if you're not familiar, kind of work like handcuffs in that they put a target on the cell and then they send the other the other part of the, com the compound goes and after that target and kills the myeloma cell. I'm not particularly sure how the tri-specifics work. I'm sure there's other videos out there, but they there has been a lot of impressed doctors in terms of reading the new studies that have come out on the tri-specifics. So in the case for me too with CAR-T, it's like, don't do it now because it does have some, you know, hurdles to overcome when you're going through that kind of treatment. It's not, it's not as, um, 
what's the word I want to say? Dramatic, all-encompassing as stem cell transplant, but it's still a big deal. So that's the reason to, to not do it unless you need it. But also there is other stuff coming down the pike. So depending on where you are with your treatment, I just wanted to share you with you my decision-making process that I'm not pursuing CAR-T right now because I'm fine on my current treatment. And also... It may be the next thing that we do, but there's also tri-specifics on the horizon, so it's going to be something else to watch. So I hope that helps you with whatever conversation you have to have with your doctor, even if you're newly diagnosed. If you're newly diagnosed, you might want to ask about CAR-T, because the sooner you get it, the better off you are. But there is a supply and demand issue, and also you might want to try a less dramatic line of treatment first. Anyway, as I like to say, we're all just living with multiple myeloma. I'll see you in the next video.